All right. So um, speaking of lists um, and, you know, checking them twice, uh, let me talk for a bit about Anatomy of a Four, right? Um, ever since it came out and, you know, it premiered at and Cannes and um, well, what I'm reading here, it won the Palm Door um, and the Palm Dog Award, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, it's been getting a lot of praise since then. To the point that, you know, currently it's in a lot of people's best stuff for the year, right? And rightfully so too, right? Which I'll get into in a bit, right? Um, but what the argument I'll make here, um, just right out the gate, is that um, this could potentially, this could be a potential um, Oscar contender, right? And not just for, for, for best, um, uh, what it is? Well, we don't say foreign language anymore, so is it non-English? Or oh, sorry, best, is it? Is is the term now best international feature or something like that? I can't I remember. Forget what it, I forget what it is called. It. Right. I right. really forget. Yeah, but we don't say foreign language anymore, right? But um, but uh, nah, you got it separate. It used to be separate. Now they kind of try to unite all of it as one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Right. But I could also see this as a best actress and best film contender. Actually, like believe it or not, right? right. So what it's about, right? It centers on um, a novelist by the name of Sandra Voiter who is played by Sandra Huller, right? Um, if I got the name wrong, forgive me, right? Um, she is going to be in, well, when I say going to be, it's like, uh, we, we have yet to see the film, uh, The Zone of Interest, which is a show that I wish we I wish came out here theatrically by year's end because that's another one I've been hearing a lot of great things about, right? It's from Jonathan Glazer. Right. Um, it have, it, it's about the Holocaust. It's some real dark shit about that. But yeah, and it's from E24, right? And it's from E24 as well, right? So yeah, again, hearing a lot of great things about it, you know, when it was doing the film festival route, right? But yeah, she is going to be in that film, right? And um, where, where the show begins is that she is um, living in this um, chalet, right? Um, in basically in the mountainside, right? Um, and this is in France, by the way, right? Um, Grenoble, if, yeah, that's, that's the name of the, the area itself, right? Uh, she has a husband who is also um, a novelist as well, but he's more washed up than anything else. Basically, he kind of keeps his he kind of keeps busy by you know taking care of the house, like renovating the place and whatnot, right? They also have a son by the name of Daniel who is partially blind. We learn later on um, how he got that way, right? He has this um, large and very cute dog that you know he goes around with. You know, kind of helps him out now when he's navigating right. when he's outdoors, right? So what happens is that. Um, Sandra is being interviewed, right? And the, the husband is upstairs uh, in this room, I believe is underneath the attic, um, blasting music. And slight spoiler, it, it's kind of funny how they use it here. It's this sort of like jazzy rendition of 50 Cent P.I.M.P. And it's so weird how it comes into it, but that, that adds a lot to the setup of the film, right? And after said interview, um, about, like, let me just say about an hour or so later, um, the sun is outside, right? Daniel is outside, just, you know, out in the snow plane and whatnot, right? He comes back and he notices his father on the ground, dead, with, you know, like, just ble- um, like just a huge, like, just bleeding out of his head now. So, clearly, he right. fell, I, uh, hence the title, um, hit his head, you know what I mean, on the way down and basically, like, died um, on the ground itself, right? And that leads to this big investigation where and and high and heavily publicized as well too, right? Where everybody, or I should say, a lot of people assume that Sandra killed him, right? But you know, okay. at the moment, we're not sure exactly if it was a murder or a suicide, right? That's the best way I could sum it up, right? And from there, what we get is just this courtroom drama now, where um, Sandra is on trial, of course, right, uh, for the supposed murder murder of her husband, and uh, we just basically see in this story. Or I should say what led to his death kind of play out, right? But it more really relates to Sandra and what she's going through because not only is she going through this whole grief, you know what I mean, of her husband dying, but yeah, everybody kind of assuming that she killed her husband, right? And, you know, it's just to show kind of, um, just kind of peeling back everything now just to kind of show you whether she did or not, right? And I'll stop there, right? Right. So what I will say is that, yes, the film does live up to the hype. It is... Ex- exceptionally directed, right? It's from um, Justine Tritt. If I got the name wrong, forgive me. Um, she's this French um, director and, and screenwriter, right? Um, she also like co-wrote the script for this, right? Um, this right. is the first time I'm hearing about her, right? And I thought like just directing why she did a fantastic job, right? Um, just the way how it's, uh, how it's filmed, it's done so well, right? It does this really unique thing where um, 
ever so often, it kind of uses sort of like this documentary style, um, style filmmaking techniques, right? Um, where sometimes it will be handheld, sometimes the, the, um, the shot itself will just kind of go out of focus for a bit and then just sort of, you know, rack focus a little bit more. Um, sometimes it will kind of appear as if it's peering from the side of like a wall or something like that. Um, like especially like during the courtroom scenes that like see somebody like if the camera is right behind someone so you know right, it's right, kind of right, right. tilt to the right you know so it does these little right. things there, you know what I mean um, and I thought that was that was really really fascinating how those those work right because um, at first it's, it's just like okay why why would that be there but how or, I s- or if, it, if it's if it's a little gimmicky but you know right it's it's this work well in the setting yeah it, it, exactly because the idea I get now um, and this is really the heart of what the show is about right. It's basically about Sandra being in the public eye and how everybody's seen her. So, you know, like just the, the camera, the usage, the usage of the camera in those situations kind of give sort of a voyeuristic feel to things. Almost like, you know, Sandra can't just be on the stand testifying. No, somebody is like recording this or filming this, you know, to, to, right. to carry back home and overanalyze, right? Um, right. There's... Well, basically, is he is he prosecutor? I believe that's that's well, that's that's the that's he he's he's not given a name in this, right? But yeah, this guy grills Sandra, right? And he yes. just right out of the gate believes that Sandra killed her husband, right? So he is just over analyzing everything that she said. You're talking about oh well, you know, in this book, you know, you say you know the character does this, and that's in relation to all this that was going on with your husband, right? Um, and he just goes so hard on this woman, boy, and you're like, "Wow, like, what is your what is your hang up with this woman?" You know what I mean, like, right, you, yeah. like you you're just villainizing her so much now, right? And that's also what the show is about, like how easy it is for us to villainize someone, right? Because oh, you know, well, of course she did it. I mean, who else could have done it, right? It's not like he slip and fall. Of course she did do it, right? Um, there's and um, there's actually like a, a great moment that I would say this actually kicks off the second act of the film, right? Where we, as the viewer and you know, the, well, the jury themselves, right? Everybody in court is subject to a recording, right? Well, the last, basically, a record. Just basically, um, I wouldn't say why, right? But the 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 husband by the name of Vincent, yeah, he he does he kind of records these these conversations that he has with his wife, right? And what we're hearing here. Is the last recording that um, that he did of himself and his wife, right? And then, well, quite bravely, the show actually shows you that that conversation itself play out in real time, and it is so uncomfortable to sit through and listen to because they are just ripping each other apart, boy. And it's it, it's so well done. Like just the acting from both parties is is just great, right? But what makes it really uncomfortable is that it it's it's just kind of giving the impression that. Both of them are unsatisfied with their marriage, right? And, you know, it's, it's literally on the verge of divorce, right? But it is there for the son, right? But then it, they, they, they bring up, oh, well, you know, the reason why the son is blind is because you were, you were negligent and this and that and too, right? And the reason why your career never flounder as the guy himself is because, you know, of you, you know, Sandra. And Sandra is, well, they at least the impression they're given here. And you kind of see throughout the film too is that she could be kind of domineering at times. You know, she could kind of want to keep things in control. Things have to be her way or no other way, right? And she will defend herself and say, well, you know, you know, this this is, I, I, I kind of have to do this, right? And they set up pretty, something pretty interesting here where um, she's actually German. Well the, the car, well, the actress is German, right? But keep in mind, she lives in France and her husband is French, um, is, speaks yeah, French, wait, right? When, when is occurring now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's current, right? It's, 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 in, French, right? it's okay. in modern times, so to speak, right? right. But... And I thought this was really like interesting to her. Um, she speaks English, so right. when she's at home and when she's at court, she speaks English. Even and then she well, she say earlier on, you know, well, you know, even though she's in France and she is bo- she is German born, she speaks English, right? Because as we learned, she feels comfortable. She feels the most comfortable speaking English. So even when she's in court and everybody else talking French. She's talking English, and it's it's just so fascinating how that plays out too, right? And um, even Vincent in the recording brings up that, like, you know, why are you talking English when we're supposed to be talking French, right? And it just cuts so deep, though. And I feel like for me, I felt like that was like the moment that really kickstarted things for me, right? Um, 
Because just to get a minor gripe out of the way, um, it, 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 I mean, overall, it is a slow burn, right? But I felt like the first act really took a while to, 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 to pick up, right? So, you know, we see the murder at the beginning of the film and then, you know, the, the um, investigation and then it jumps into the trial. So I just felt like for me personally, maybe I just need to watch it over. Maybe, um, maybe just kind of wait a while after having eaten lunch or something like that because that's what I did. So I just kind of felt myself kind of dipping out of sleep ever so often, right? But, you know, I was still tuned with what was going on, right? Um, yeah, the, 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 the first bit, the first part of the, the trial itself, yeah, was was kind of was kind of slow though, like like kind of kind of slow, right? I guess maybe if I watch it again, I will, you know, um, more, you know, I'll, I'll I'll be locked into it a lot more, right? But I felt like when they drop that whole recording thing, and you and you you, you finally see the husband in uh, in the, in the film now, and they have that that really vicious back and forth. That's when the story picked up for me, and from there, that's where I, I felt, um, you know, just what the story and you know what um what the director Justine was getting at, right? Um, right. performances are uh, great but really the, the, the standout is Sandra Huller though and that's what I said earlier on I could see her getting a best actress nomination though she was fantastic though she held this film literally on her shoulders um, and just how she plays the character too is, is a very very complex character uh, for me personally I can't write characters like that I can't even write you yep. know courtroom dramas as well right so i can't even do that but i thought that they did that very well but the characterization they gave her was great though even right now to something like i speak english because i kind of feel intimidated that's all i see without spoiling anything it's so right. fascinating though and she just kneels it very well right um there's a lawyer actually uh, my name of vincent um he well his a, a fellow character and performance wise he was great right even his son um who well who plays daniel i thought that he was great though like they give him a lot of like he has a lot of emotional range and there's a lot of like this not a lot but there's some really like um like this powerful moments though where yeah he has to come he has to step to the stand now and you know just confess some things because um yeah how he's seen it too is you know just from observing over the years about how their marriage have just pretty much um fallen apart right so you can imagine how that'll feel for you know a kid like him, right? Especially with what he's been through and what how that led, uh, how that left almost left him blind, so to speak, right? You know, um, outside of the Fifty Cent song that I mentioned earlier, there's not that much music in it, but I thought that the music that was there works. Um, it's piano based, you know what I mean, and it it adds a lot to the story. That's all. See, without spoiling anything. Um, but again, you know, it is a slow burn, right? So. Yes, um, and, and I should mention too, it's um, roughly two and a half hours. So you have to kind of go in knowing that you have to, if, if, if you stick with it, though, that's all I'll say. Yeah, you will be rewarded with a very, very, very well made, well acted, and well written film, right? Um, but just to wrap things up, though, um, I'm not over the moon with it as yet. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I just need to watch it over and just see the story kind of play out right. now knowing how it, you know, starts and ends, right? Because, yeah, like, I kind of went in somewhat blind. I just knew that it involved, you know, somebody who died, you know what I mean? And, like, this this iconic image that kind of is part of the marketing of the film. Yeah, this character just on the, on the snow, you know what I mean, with blood coming out of his head, right? And that's, that's the image, right? And you just see, well, the, the, um, the mother and, and son watching crying, right? That's, that's the, the image that he used, right, to, to, to promote the film. That's really all I knew. Um, but I didn't know that it was going to be this, this family drama, um, you know, like I knew there was going to be the courtroom stuff. I didn't know that it was going to be this, this, this family drama. And one that was just so, yeah, just, just, just powerful though. And just rough at times to sit through, right? Because yeah, it, it, it just feels so real. And, you know, it's just, woof. like they can really feel it for the kid. That's all I'll say. You really feel it for the kid, right? Um, but just, just, just to wrap things up, right? So yes, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it, it's one of those shows where, you know, even if you, you have issues with the pacing or even if you have issues with how it ends, I actually like and appreciate the way how it ends, right? I have no complaints with the end. Just the, the sheer craft that went into putting this film together is, I mean, it's, it's undeniable. I, I, I can't knock the, the writing or the performances or the direction at all. Like, like those are just great, right? So if maybe you watch it and you just find all right well okay that's it okay cool i mean i understand right if you're not blown away by it that that's fine and for me honestly i was not completely blown away by it either um either right but still um the, it, it's just so well made and just so well put together that 
I, I kind of have to say, yes, it's it's great, you know what I mean? Uh, but really and truly, it, it's a show that you, that you need to watch over, though. Um, you need to see more than once, right? You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get everything upon first uh, viewing because there's a lot that goes on. It's more than the murder. It's more than the courtroom case. It's more than the family drama. There's a lot of stuff going on below the surface that you wouldn't really pick up instantly with your first viewing, right? That being said, though, um, I do see this um, showing up, you know, during Oscar season or being discussed during Oscar season. I don't know if it's submitted. I maybe it did. I don't know, but um, I could see this at least winning a best, you know, um, international feature film or something like that. I think that is a shoe in to win, right? Um, if not that, I could see it being nominated for best actress, just offer Sandra Huller's um, performance alone. And I could also see this as a Best Picture nominee as well because, again, just the writing direction and acting was just so on point, right? So, yeah, for me, um, I'm going to give this a strong 4 to a very light 4.5 out of 5, man. And, yes, it will make it in my best of, but um, it's not going to be high, though, because I know for, for many critics, they'll have it up there as top 10 and whatnot. Eh, it's not a top 10 for me, right? It, it certainly is. Right. But I don't want, you know, 2023 to end and I forget that I saw this. I really want to remember this. And more importantly, I really want to rewatch this because I feel like if I watch it over again, I'll really, really appreciate the the storytelling and everything that went into it, right? But yeah, it's it's solid business, man. Um, it's supposed to be coming out on digital very soon. I, I I'm hearing that it might come out before years end. I do hope so. But believe you me, you'll be hearing about that, you know, leading up to the end of the year for sure when it comes to best stuff stuff. And also during Oscar season. So yeah, this has Oscar buzz. Oh, sorry, not Oscar buzz. This has Oscar potential written all over this, man. So yeah, right. if you haven't already, definitely check out Anatomy of a Four.